Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Gail SOB, Spunky Old Broad, back with you again for the second part of me as your guest. Um, I guess one of the things that I want to talk to you about uh, in the second part is, are you the expert? If you're putting yourself out there and after all, you know, you've lived a long time, you have a lot of skills and a lot of abilities. Are you the expert in what you're trying to get across and what you're trying to to get to people? You know, um, for example, so many times I've been asked, how did you get on TV? And they look at me with big, excited eyes and say, well, how did you do that? Let me tell you, it is nothing but hard work. And the reason I say that is because there's a particular station um, in Palm Springs that I've been on three times and they like me. I mean, they really do like me. And they've invited me back anytime I'm out there or want to come out there. And of course, now they're doing everything digitally, etc. But to get back on there, it may take me nine phone calls. It might take me 10 emails. It might take me five or six texts. Why? Because they're overworked and understaffed. And most of these shows that you get on, uh, especially on television, uh, are from 5 a.m. until 7 a.m. Because at 7 a.m. Uh, you get your Good Morning Americas and the Today Shows and CBS This Morning, etc. So most of the shows come from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. That means that the producers have to be in there at 4 a.m. because they've got to be ready for everything at 5 well, by nine o'clock, they're done. They don't want to hear from you. They don't want to know from you. And every producer likes to be contacted differently. Some do want texts. Some do want emails. Some do want a phone call. So until you find out what that particular producer wants, plus the producers are constantly changing. So even though they may love you, unless you are some kind of celebrity where you have somebody doing the booking for you and they are very happy to have you on, then it's difficult to get back on. So uh, that's why I say, are you the expert? Because um, you need to use, you know, a lot of information in that segment proposal that you're sending to the station. You've got to maybe use some testimonials. You've got to tell a story in very short form. You have to use a lot of facts. Um, you might even have to use some celebrity. For example, when I did my um, uh, segments on are you uh, what the three worst mistakes to make when starting a second career, I used Betty White, I used Henry Winkler, I used Suzanne Summers as my celebrities. Why? Because while we're talking about them, they're running what is called B roll in the background. So they're actually showing. Uh, a, a B-roll of Henry Winkler as the Fonz, Betty White on whatever show she was on at the time, etc. What most people don't know, and especially as Betty is, is nearing the 100 year mark, um, you know, she really didn't become famous until she was over 50. She was 51 when she did the Mary Tyler Moore show. And that's really what launched her, you know, when she did the yeah, Hugh, Hugh Grant, uh, Hugh, um, uh, show with the with the broadcast and the Mary Tyler Moore and all of that. She was 51 years old. Uh, Henry Winkler, although he became famous as the Fonz and an interesting uh, factoid is he went to Emerson College, my college, and uh, he's been very generous to the college and very giving. Uh, but he uh, he was dyslexic and he found it very difficult to study, you know, and to get through everything. And yet, how is his second career evolved? He now writes children's books. If you don't think that's difficult for someone who's dyslexic, it is extremely difficult. So when we talk about, you know, uh, what is your second career or what is it that you are doing now in the second half of your life? What is it that got you to where you were going in the first place? And with Henry Winkler, it was his drive and his determination. And um, teachers would tell me when I used to go back for my uh, reunions, et cetera, he would stand in the doorway and he would say, I am going to be famous. Jay Leno also went to uh, Emerson. And uh, I had the privilege of, uh, when I was out in uh, Burbank, uh, going to visit him at the Tonight Show when he was on. And I got to do an opening segment. Now, you didn't see it because this is the warming up of the audience. But I got up on stage and I did the Charleston and some dances because that's how I started out was as a singer and a dancer. So it was interesting. And of course, I got some wonderful Tonight Show socks. 
as my reward for being the, one of the opening uh, segments that nobody ever got to see except the audience that was in attendance. But it was fun and it was, uh, you know, it was all a part of, of uh, who we are and what we're doing. But to me, the interesting thing is with all the aches and pains I have, with everything that I'm going through, and most of you know that I'm going through my fourth case of breast cancer. This has been over a 30 some year period, but now it's really the worst. Um, and even though I've had now, I'm counting because I've had now two kidney surgeries. I've had 19 surgeries altogether, and I have another one coming up in a week and a half. Um, the whole point is I've always made my living with my mouth by talking. And I feel very comfortable going into a room with a whole bunch of strangers. And I know there are those of you out there who say, I don't want to network. I don't want to go to these meetings. I don't feel comfortable going into a crowd where I don't know anybody. And I love it. I think it's great. I mean, if you go into a room with 30 people, you're probably saying, I don't care if I meet 29 of them. I just gonna con I'm just going to concentrate on one. Whereas I'm hoping I'll meet all 29 or 30. So that's my skill. That's what I'm an expert in. That's what I do well. And even when I'm not feeling good, if I know I've got a show to do, or I know that I'm going to be a guest on a podcast or a, a radio show, or I know that I'm taking part in a summit and I'm one of the speakers, I am on because that's who I am. Then I collapse and I go back to bed after that. But that's why I want you to really think about this theme that I, I have now of leaving, leaving a, a, a legacy and living a life of legacy. What do you want to leave when you're gone? What do you want people to remember about you? What do you want people to say, hey, you know, uh, this is something I think that's, that's kind of interesting. And um, I, I think this is a part of, of who you are and what you're about. Now, the one thing that I am going to tell you that I think is really detrimental, and I don't think a lot of people think about it, is on these Zoom calls, people are not getting, especially women, they're not getting made up, they're not having their hair done, they're not dressing properly, and that gives an impression. I can tell you that out of, let's just say, 10 people that are on a Zoom call, nine are not made up professionally and they look like they just got out of bed. That's not someone I want to invest with. That's not someone I want to give my money to. And so even though they're an expert, unless they're someone who's a war, a, a won an Academy Award or something like that, I'm not going to feel comfortable uh, spending my time with them. So I want, to, I want to suggest to you that if you know you're going to go on camera, that you look good all the time, that you spend that extra few moments making up making sure you look presentable. And again, what do you do? For example, if you're a doctor, if you're a physician, dress in a white lab coat, that's perfectly appropriate. If you're someone who is uh, an engineer and you deal with mechanics in some form, and you are someone who wears a shirt with a badge on it, that's okay, wear it. But if you're someone who is a professional business person, then look professional in everything that you're doing. I think that's a, a real important segment that you need to pay attention to. Uh, some of the other things that I think is very important too is uh, you are now in your own space. So whoever you are dealing with, male or female, you are an equal. And I don't want you ever to feel as if you need to be subordinate to somebody. They may have a bigger title than you do. They may make more money than you do, but that doesn't mean that they're worth in substance any more than you are. So you need to stand up for what you believe. You need to stand up for what you think. Now, I don't say that you should be argumentative. You don't need to start a fight for the purpose of starting a fight. But if someone challenges you on something that you know is correct, you have the ability to stand up for what you think and what you're talking about. So I want you to understand that if you are the expert, 
If you know what it is, for example, uh, I'll give you an example of something that happened to me last night. Uh, I bought some sweet potatoes because, and I don't cook. You need to understand, I do not cook, but I microwave. So I figured I can make these baked potatoes, sweet potatoes in the microwave. So I found out how you made these sweet potatoes. I want to tell you something. They were the worst I have ever had in my life. I was told you bake the sweet potato for three minutes and 30 seconds. Not only did I do that for three minutes and 30 seconds, I put it in for an extra minute and it was still almost hard as a rock. So I opened it up. I put some butter on it, but I can tell you it was awful. Do you think I'm going to pay attention to somebody who can show me the proper way to cook? Of course I am because I don't know a thing about it. And so they are an expert to me. And if you think, for example, I remember when my mom, when I was a little girl and I didn't want to drink my orange juice and she would say, now I'm going to put my finger in it and it's going to make it sweet. And I believed it. I believed it because she was my mom and she knew everything. And my mom was an excellent cook and an excellent baker. And I, and she catered all my events, every party that I had, she baked and she cooked. And I can tell you, that when she said something, I paid attention to it because she knew what she was talking about. Did I fight her in a lot of things? You bet. And I'm going to give you another example of that. When I was in, I guess I was in high school because I was 16 years old and I was a senior and I had tried out for the Roxyettes in New York and they are an abbreviated version of the Rockettes. The Rockettes are the, the prem de la prem, but uh, the Roxyettes were from the Roxy Theater and I got picked. And so they called me to go on a summer tour. Now, remember, I'm 16 years old. They called me up and I, they told me I got picked and I was so excited. I mean, I thought, oh, my gosh, I have won the I have won the grand prize. Well, that was till my mom got on the phone. And then my mother said, well, uh, is there a chaperone and where do they stay and what kind of housing do they have? Blah, 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 blah. Well, to make a long story short. My dream was cut short. I did not get to go and be a Roxyette that summer because the people that my, were talking to my mom did not answer the questions to her satisfaction. Now at 16, I couldn't just leave home and say, I'm gonna go do this. Now, when I was 20 and I graduated college and I knew that I had to support myself and get a job, then I could do what I wanted to. And I did what I wanted to do, which was move to Florida. And of course, uh, they were not thrilled. My parents said nice girls did not do this, but I did it because I knew that I had to make my own way and I knew I wanted to make it in Florida. And so I gave myself my two weeks to make it. I had saved up $200 by working in college, teaching modeling and uh, teaching piano because I also had studied piano. And so I made my, my $200 and I came to Florida and that's how I started here. But the interesting thing is at that point, at the age of 20, I could do that because I was being independent and on my own. But I do have to tell you, I was here, I guess maybe six months and my mother came to Florida to see how was I living? Where was I living? Was everything okay? Et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's interesting when you look back and say, what did you do to test your parents? What did you do to agree with your parents? But I just want you to think about when I ask you, are you the expert? I want you to be able to say, yes, I am an expert in, and it could be maybe you're an expert knitter or crocheter. I remember in seventh grade, I think it was seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade, we took home ec. And one of the things that we had to do was be we had to be able to knit a pair of Argyle socks. I will never forget that Argyle socks. And we also had to knit Afghan squares and put this Afghan together for the Red Cross and things like that. Well, again, I am not very good with my hands. I'm not very good with with anything that even resembles mechanical. And so I think my my Argyle socks had more holes in them than the Swiss cheese, but I got them done, you know, and they were a pair of socks, holes in the socks, but they were a pair of socks. And my Afghan, I did better with my Afghan because that was a little more, more uh, streamlined, but still even my Afghan had holes in it. So uh, it's, it's interesting when somebody talks about being able to knit. And I had an aunt that for every 
birthday or a celebration for any of the nieces um, or nephews, she would knit something. She was uh, a knitter uh, superb. And I, as a matter of fact, I still have one of her, a couple of her uh, garments that she knit for me way back in high school. But the thing is, is that I looked to her as an expert because she did things I could not do. So when people say, are you an expert? Be honest about it. You know, uh, did you really do what you say you've done? Or are you borrowing it from somebody else? Uh, are you saying, yes, um, I can do this because, you know, you know, it'll get you those extra points. It's almost like when somebody goes for an audition for a movie and they say, you know, can you ride a horse? And you've never been on a horse in your life. And they, you say, oh, yeah, I'm an expert rider. And you've never, ever, ever, ever been near a horse. Uh, those are things you do because you want to get the part. Well, that's not being an expert. So that's something I just want you to pay attention to. And that's that's a part of what we we talk about. So uh, I, I think you need to do an audit of yourself and what your skills are, what you can contribute, what you can offer and so forth. Um, I also find it interesting and I'm very gratified by this, by the way, that now women are supporting women. I am just thrilled that today women are championing other women saying, yes, you need to hire this person. Yes, you need to recognize her skills. Yes, you need to do these things. Because I remember, you know, not that long ago, I guess it was the uh, 80s and 90s when I was teaching leadership skills for, for women. And women didn't want to work for women. They wanted to work for men because they thought women were were too petty and too catty and and would do everything to hold them back. Whereas men uh, may not have given them equal opportunity, but were more open to some of their suggestions and some of the way they did things. And I am just thrilled now that women say, yes, I support this organization because it supports women. I, uh, I, I, I want to uh, give this opportunity to another woman because she deserves it. So, uh, and I think it's so interesting that now we have an astronaut in space where her husband went before uh, for two months. She is up there for six months and uh, she's got the same skills. In fact, she was the one who was in charge of, of the mission uh, when they took off, et cetera, uh, for outer space. So uh, it's, it's just everything is open today. Are there people who will still hold you back? Of course. Are there still people who are still biased? Of course. Are there still people who uh, say, no, you won't have the opportunity? Of course, you read about them every day. You see them in the in the Twitter feeds and on Facebook and in LinkedIn and things like that. But they're fewer and far between than they were just a few years ago. So me as the spunky old bra, the one who originated the, the SOB, the one who is the original SOB, uh, I am just thrilled for all of you out there who are over the age of 50, who are doing magnificent, wonderful things. And I want to know about them. So please email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. Let me know what you're doing. If we can feature you on the show, we will. If I can talk about you on the show, I will. Uh, I love reading about the things that you do. I want to encourage you all to go to my website, spunkyoldbroad.com. There you'll find my store where I have, uh, you know, coffee cups and clothing and T-shirts and leggings for you. I have my online courses under SOB University. I have courses in the media. I have courses on uh, living life with gusto. I have courses on how to find love after 50. And also, uh, since this is the SOB show, all of you should be qualified to be part of our Facebook group, the SOB Virtual Club. And if you're interested in joining, it's free. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SOB Virtual Club and join. We have over 500 members. And these are people who I dialogue with every single day. And if you have questions, you can ask me there. If there are things you want me to cover, you can let me know there as well. And when I ask for you to give me feedback, I want it. I don't want it to be uh, to be, uh, you know, just one sided. I want it to be part of it. So we have about five minutes left to this uh, to this segment of the show. And I just want to make sure that you understand that I am asking you, my listener, for help. I want you to let me know what you would like me to address. 
I would like you to let me know who you would like me to have as my guests. I hope that you also will let me know the things that you would like me to emphasize, the things that you don't think are important, uh, that you don't need for me to talk about. But I also want to make sure that all of you are getting your checkups. I would not know a lot of things that are going on in my life if I did not go for my checkups. And that's how they found the cancer again. That's how I found my kidney problem. And then I'm going and getting an endoscopy. So they see what's going on in my stomach because I know I'm getting problems in my stomach from all the meds that I'm taking, but also, uh, you know, it, it's who I am and I need to know what's going on inside of me. So don't miss your checkups, folks. Uh, make sure that you have good health care. Make sure that, I mean, there's so many plans that are available to you. I'm part of an HMO, not a PPO, not a private concierge firm. I am part of an HMO. I did have to change HMOs after 25 years, 30 years with one company because that particular HMO was not taking my doctors anymore. And I like my doctors. And so I needed to change. And that's what I did. I wasn't thrilled about it because I served, I served on the consumer board of that particular HMO, but I had to change. So as of January of 2021, I changed, but it was something that I had to do. So uh, I just want to make sure you're getting the, the health care that you need. Uh, don't say, oh, I'll do it later. Another thing that you might be neglecting, which you don't, a lot of people don't think about, uh, are their mouths, their teeth. Um, I'm now getting massages and the massage therapist said to me, are those all your own teeth? Like it was a miracle I had them. And I said, yeah, they are. And evidently people at 83 don't have their own teeth anymore, but I do have mine. And it's because at 21, 22, um, I, well, I had always taken care of my teeth, but not the way I do now. And I had a dentist say to me, your gums are bad. And if your gums are bad, you're going to lose your teeth. And so I said, what do I have to do? And he said, you have to brush after every meal, you have to floss, you have to pick. And that's what I do from the age of 22 to now. So, you know, that's what, that's uh, to 60 years. I've been flossing and picking and brushing after every meal. And that's why I have my own teeth. But your mouth can give you problems that you haven't really thought about and can cause various diseases that you may not be aware of as well. So all of that is a part of who you need to be. And I just want to say those to you because I have the chance to say those things to you because this is my show and I'm doing it now and I want you to take care of yourselves. So make sure you go to the dentist, make sure you go to the doctor. Uh, and after all these years of poo-pooing massages, I get them every week now and they are doing great things for me. So I want to really encourage you to uh, do that as well. My sister and her husband are big massage enthusiasts. In fact, she just celebrated her 88th birthday and they went away to this resort for the uh, two days and uh, they got what was called 100 minute massages, which I thought was just so cool. I thought that was just adorable. And I didn't realize they were at the resort and I called her to wish her happy birthday. That's where she was, but they just, uh, they enjoy that particular resort and it's near their home and they just have a wonderful time. And her husband's 89 and he's still working as a marketing guru. So, you know, just because you're 88 or 89, you don't have to stop either. They are both very active. She in the social justice world and he in the marketing world. So anyway, that's kind of what I have for you today, folks. Uh, remember the website is spunkyoldbroad.com. Everything is there for you. The courses, the store, uh, the group, the Facebook group. And I'd love for you to also subscribe to my newsletter. You can do that right on the website. And that way you'll get a monthly, well, a weekly newsletter from me. I send it out every Monday and it kind of encapsulates everything I've done for the week and gives you a few uh, little extra hints that I give you. So that's it. Thanks for being with me. Uh, look forward to talking with you next month and having you listen to the rest of the wonderful women that we interview on SOB Radio.